The years 1937 to 1938 went down in the history of Ukraine as the years of the Great Purge. Then, 80 years ago, massive repression began in Ukraine and beyond, which had the goal of destroying all real and imaginary enemies of Joseph Stalin. This is how the authors and compilers of the multi-volume series Rehabilitated by History explained the punitive actions of the Bolshevik regime. The Great Purge was primarily directed at the destruction of political rivals, former leaders of the opposition and deviations in the party, the bloody purge of the state and party apparatus, old Bolsheviks and the so-called former ones, and the destruction of free thought hotbeds, primarily among intellectuals and national minorities. It should be noted that violence always accompanied the Soviet system in Ukraine. Actually, Bolshevik power tools have been worked on since its first days. It is known that Bolshevik power entered Ukraine several times between 1917 and 1920, every time it entered with military power and large punitive actions. Until 1937, Bolshevik repression actions were practically constant in Ukraine. That was superimposed on the Bolshevik dictatorship sketch quite organically, as any dictatorship comes to power by way of violence. It all began back in the 1920s. The idea to remove, specifically remove, such wording was invented just for those who posed a threat to their connections with the criminal environment. Under the guise of fighting the criminal elements, the first victims of Stalinist repressions were the old Ukrainian intelligentsia, especially that which was associated with national governments and non-Bolshevik parties during the liberation struggle of 1917 to 1920, also outstanding figures of culture and science. Those who entered the territory of neighboring states along with the army of the UPR, Skoropadsky and the White Army were considered political bandits. Then an amnesty was declared and they were returned to the Soviet Union. And then that norm was applied to them. They were included in the list of politically dangerous persons. Then that circle began expanding. The category of former people was included in it. Who are the former people? They are those who belong to the wealthy strata of the population. Then the Kulaks. Gradually that category, which started in the 1920s, was expanded so far that anybody could fit into it. The list consisted of about 18 points. But then real and imaginary opponents of the Soviet power became the most common in those categories. Among the high-profile political trials of 1929 to 1930, it is possible to name an indicative case fabricated by the state political administration against a supposedly secret nationalist organization called the Union of Liberation of Ukraine. Forty leading Ukrainian scientists, writers and other representatives of the intelligentsia ended up in the courtroom. The trial was intended to create an atmosphere of suspicion and the Bolshevik power switched to a wide-sweeping offensive against the intellectual elite. One of the first institutions to suffer a crushing blow was the All-Ukrainian Academy of Sciences. Censorship was introduced into the publications and the most active departments were closed one by one. In 1931, the history department of the famous Ukrainian scholar Mykhailo Khrushchevsky was closed. He was accused of being involved in a secret organization and was deported to Russia. He died during his treatment on November the 24th, 1934. Obviously, they facilitated his death. The operation to remove the boil he had was not life-threatening, but his condition deteriorated after the operation. There is a theory that those operations resemble those of Mikhail Frunz when doctors facilitated his death in 1925. Many colleagues of Khrushchevsky and almost all his henchmen and family members were subjected to even more severe persecution. Almost the entire family of Khrushchevsky was totally repressed. Only his distant relatives remained alive. None of the remainder of his relatives survived. All of his cousins were executed. In the early 30s, the offensive against religious masses of Ukraine began. 
Then repression spread to the religious life of Ukraine. Virtually all the confessors of all faiths actively opposed the new communist assault. The Bolshevik party responded with another campaign against the church. That was the beginning of the total destruction of all confessions. And the peak of the destruction of Ukrainians organized by the Communist Party was the Holodomor, Great Famine in Ukraine between 1932 and 1933, which claimed the lives of over four and a half million people. Almost 20 countries of the world officially recognized the Holodomor as genocide of the Ukrainian people. When you come to the archive and look at the documents of the Communist Party, the state's political administration and the NKVD and the secret stamp, it became obvious that all the party and punitive bodies were working to strengthen their power. Their main task was to not lose Ukraine. That's what mattered the most to them. This fact can be traced through all the documents. The artificially orchestrated Holodomor was one of the means to break the desire of the Ukrainian people for independence. Ukraine's dissatisfaction with and hatred of Stalin was not surprising. The residents of Ukrainian villages never supported the Bolsheviks, massively replenishing the major cities, which were the main basis for supporting the communists, the peasants turned them into anti-Bolshevik cells. I have no doubt at all regarding the fact that Ukraine was nothing more than a bone in Stalin's throat. I do not know of any other people who were so consistently and persistently persecuted by Stalin. That is evident in the aforementioned documents. The Kremlin not so much hated Ukraine as it never trusted it and was always afraid of losing it. It was a special matter of that power, of that powerful nest egg. They tried to shove it into the pro-Krustian head of Bolshevik doctrine and did not stop at anything neither at the mass social actions, nor the terror, such as the Holodomor, nor the preventive strikes against the elite, nor the party purges in their circles. The Great Purge in Ukraine started like everywhere else in the Soviet Union. In the spring of 1937, preparing for the 20th anniversary of the Bolshevik coup in Petrograd, the Central Committee of the CPSU began to develop a worthy celebration of the date. In May, a campaign was launched to evict individuals who were expelled from the party, as well as family members of the repressed, to distant regions of the Soviet Union. That is, by the anniversary of the October Revolution, the major centres of the country of the Soviets had to be cleared from potential and imaginary enemies of the Soviet system. They decided to evict families of the repressed from the major cities, capitals, port cities and cities of industrial significance throughout the entire Soviet Union. In the context of those purges were the Troitskyists, Zinovevites. By the beginning of May, orders began to be received for purging large cities of regional significance of the so-called Kulak and criminal elements. This was the first line along which the Great Purge Unfolded. The peculiarity of the repression of 1937 was that the limits of arrests were introduced by the high command of power. Soon repression by nationality became part of the large-scale repression. Poles, Germans, Latvians, Romanians, Greeks and representatives of other nationalities that allegedly formed espionage and sabotage bases fell into the field of vision of the punitive bodies. And then the flywheel began working. Lines were launched, one after another. If at first it was planned to complete the German line in five days, it lasted three months until the fall. Then it was decided to extend it. It grew to the spring of 1938. The same happened to the Poles, Greeks, Bulgarians and all nationalities. 
And in fact, it grew into a flywheel of total cleansing, which assumed the form of mass arrests and destruction in the second half of 1937. A typical sign of the so-called Soviet justice was the over-fulfillment of orders and instructions of Moscow's NKVD officers. If at first it was planned that from the fifth unit, which was the first execution category for which the order came, then later the second category was supposed to be introduced in the concentration camps. So, at first, there were about one to five of those. But in 1938, we can see a completely different ratio. 85 to 99 percent of the people arrested then were executed. Can you imagine what was happening in 1937? It was like the usual internal waste collection campaign, which was intended to ensure peace during the time of the celebration of the 20th anniversary of the October Revolution. But contrary to the intended purpose of keeping the peace, it turned into a total spree, an outright pogrom. The year 1937 became the final chord of the crusade of the Bolsheviks against the Ukrainian intelligentsia. For most of the defendants of the cases fabricated in the early 1930s, the term of their imprisonment was coming to an end. But the Kremlin's plans did not include their return to Ukraine. Thus, the idea to cleanse the camps appeared. New cases began to appear in the camps, according to which the majority of the Ukrainian intelligentsia were convicted once again. 287 Ukrainian prisoners were handed down the death sentence. Among them were poet Mikola Zorov, playwright Mikola Kulish, actor and director Les Kubas, geographer Stepan Rudnitsky, teacher Oleksiy Yavorsky, and others. Sandomok is a notorious place, the last resort of the artistic and scientific elite of Ukraine. They were brought there and executed. It was the last burial place for Ukrainians. There must have been a pantheon of the Ukrainian elite destroyed by the Stalinist regime. But unfortunately, it is very difficult to preserve that memory there. And there, where the Ukrainian pantheon should have been razed to the ground, and no stone should go unturned in order to prevent that from happening. According to Ukrainian researchers, over 260,000 people were arrested during the Great Purge in Ukraine between 1937 and 1938. Most of them were executed. That was about 1% of the total population of Ukraine at that time. That 1% is not scary when it's on paper, but when that happens in your family, everyone, including babies and old people, remained at the mercy of... One of the providers of the family was taken away, and the rest became enemies of the Soviet regime. How much is 1%? Considering that it was the elite, production elite, managerial elite, scientific, artistic, cultural, ethnic, any elite. The Great Purge was a truly devastating catastrophe for Ukraine from which the country has not recovered to this very day. The truth about the Great Purge of 1937-1938 was carefully concealed in the Soviet times. Only in the mid-1980s, information about the crimes of the Bolshevik regime became public knowledge. It sent out a real shockwave in Soviet society at the time, and complete misunderstanding on the part of people living abroad in democratic states. American teenage boys and girls learned at what scale people were being executed and for what for. The first thing that came to their minds was to ask, why didn't they just call the police? Indeed, they could not understand how such a terrible crime could be committed. The internal security agencies, the purpose of which in other countries was to ensure safety of their citizens in democratic countries. In the Soviet Union, 
were trained specifically to decimate the population of their own country. The Red Terror in Ukraine had reached a tragic and catastrophic scale because the Ukrainian people had felt the taste of independence between 1917 and 1920. Gradually, its idea was born in the elite environment and began to spread among the population. By various repressive means, Bolshevism tried to etch this idea out of the consciousness of Ukrainians. After the first wave of Red Terror against the insurgent peasantry, several hunger strikes and the massive famine of 1932-33 followed. Then came the turn of political processes, the destruction of political parties and social movements, trade unions and religious organizations. That was followed by the establishment of a regime of total control over artists, writers, scientists and scholars, the development of the Gulag system, the destruction of the entire social strata and the deportation and persecution on the basis of one's nationality. Such were the milestones in building socialism in Ukraine.